This build will make you forget all about Empower Lagan's Moonbeam. For good measure, and in case you blinked, here's the other tentacle. But, can the build slay dragons? Yeah, it can slay dragons. Regardless of where your character is in terms of progress, this is one of the strongest builds in the game. By utilizing the gear swap suggestions shown in this video, you can have highly efficient echoes and incredibly quick and easy boss kills. All this requires no passive or specialization point respects. You simply leave some pieces of gear in your inventory and equip them come boss time. Ultimately, it doesn't much matter which three points are removed when you unequip one of the gel cores. The damage with Eye of Reunequipped is so high that the targeted boss will just melt. This is a melee or thrown version of Detonating Arrow, and we can use Gel Curse Blast Knife in order to accomplish this. This will also give you additional specialization points for Detonating Arrow itself. This will be using the Marksman Mastery for the Rogue class, and if you're looking for a bow or archer type build using similar skills, I've got one of those on the channel as well. I'll leave that link in the video description. This is going to cover the melee version. By utilizing Eye of Green and Jeweler Star Dial, you can actually take the boss damage that this build has to another level. We want to look at the bottom two affixes for Irene. 84% chance to gain a stack of Reen's ire for 5 seconds on melee crit, and this build has an enormous critical strike chance. Next up, each one of those stacks is going to give you melee critical strike multiplier, which is going to further the damage of this build and increase fire damage over time. We're mainly concerned about this melee critical strike multiplier. As you can see when using the setup, given that enormous amount of critical strike, we can generate tremendous amounts of stack. In this case, we hit about 150 of these stacks. That means we're getting 750% increased melee critical strike multiplier. It's pretty insane. In fact, what we're looking for his throwing attack speed. What we can do here is use our traversal skill being shift, gain increased attack speed and double the effect that we have on that legendary potential. That means if you're going into a boss and have say 25% increased attack speed on that particular line, when you use your shift you'll gain 50% and you'll have 50% more stacks, meaning that you could get over a thousand percent critical strike multiplier to this build. Oh, by the way, you can equip two star dials at once, doubling the effect. Last, this build setup is already very costly. In fact, it requires Core of the Mount, which can only be farmed off of Tier 4 Lightless Arbor, and that may be difficult for a lot of players watching the video. The Eye of Reen and Jewel Star Dial will require even more legendary potential and even more specific affixes granted onto the items where you have a little more flexibility with some of the other items in this setup. As you can see, I've got four totally different affixes on my daggers. The daggers can be equipped at level 36, and although I personally have not played this build while leveling, there's been a ton of feedback saying this build's perfectly viable to use once you're able to equip these. Prior to that point, you can use a bow and just use a ranged version of the build. Eye of Reen has required level of 70, meaning if you want to use legendary potential on any of these that you've found, you'll need to be able to clear tier 3 Temporal Sanctum, which is also meaning that you'll need a character capable of doing that. That may also be a somewhat steep requirement for a more casual player. Just be aware of this while you're deciding if this is the build for you. This build is incredibly controller friendly, which is always a plus in my book. Now, the biggest thing with this build is managing your mana. Explosive Trap can get very expensive, especially when you look at the specialization tree and realize how many additional things it's throwing out. Trap Sprinkler, whenever an explosive trap detonates, it has a chance to drop another fresh explosive trap. Automated Bombardment has an additional 70% chance for that Trap Sprinkler node to activate at the cost of 11 more mana, so this starts to become costly. Trap Richet also allows explosive traps to have a chance to fling at enemies within a nearby distance, and we can have the addition of acid flasks with this build as well, but all of this will add up. It is really important that you conserve your mana and get a feel for how many traps you need to throw. This is less of an issue on bosses, which is what makes Eye of Reen and the Jeweler Star Dial so effective. We can go in and just expend our entire mana pool and allow that damage to kill the boss all in one go. You'll essentially use Shift for mobility, or you can use it defensively to keep your character alive, and then you'll throw out a number of traps. And the feel that you want to develop with this particular build is knowing how many traps you can use in order to kill the enemy. Essentially, you want to cast as few traps as possible in order to conserve your mana and allow you to continue on through the echo before you go oom and waste time and then have the possibility of being killed. Shift Shuriken as specialization talents is a really popular combo for a lot of rogue builds, not just this marksman. Essentially here what we're going to do is have Shift have reduced cooldown, have the chance to grant us increased movement speed, which synergizes with our passive tree as well, giving us additional damage. Shift will also cause us to be invulnerable and cleanse all negative ailments on us at the same time. Top of all this will actually generate shurikens when we use this shift ability. The main point of shurikens will be in the form of increasing their duration and then increasing the armor that we have while they're active so we can shift, become invulnerable, cleanse ailments, and also gain some armor all at the same time. Acid Flask will have the ability to grant armor shred and so just generate some additional damage for the build. We can also gain haste through these specialization talents as well. 
and we can cause blind on the enemies, increasing our survivability. And some slow and chance for frailty, and overall acid flask since it procs automatically is just a great boost to this build. Detonating arrow, of course, is the skill that we're trying to proc through the explosive traps, and this is just here purely to do tons of damage, and that it certainly does. Making your way over to the right side of the tree, lightning tendrils will penetrate enormous 60% of lightning resistance. Towards the bottom, we'll increase the arming time of detonating arrow and allow that to cause additional damage when it does detonate. Final point for critical strike multiplier at a mere 6% compared to over a thousand critical strike multiplier that you can possibly get from the Eye of Reen setup still benefits the build. The best recommendation would be to swap Eye of Reen in for bosses, and if you happen to have a Jewel Restar dial with throwing attack speed on it, you would swap that in as well. For general echoes, you'll actually want to run something with throwing damage and minus throwing attack mana cost. This will greatly help your mana conservation and just give you a more smooth experience through the monoliths. You'll of course put this on both rings and that'll just further the effect and make mana issues really non-existent. The general damage for echoes is pretty overkill, and that allows Yuseni's Spear to also be a great choice for helping your boss damage. It's going to give you increased cold and light lightning damage and you're going to be able to generate one of these water orbs every time you hit a rare or boss enemy. Devotion is a great choice, adding some additional lightning damage and lightning penetration. Alternatively, you can also run the Apostate Sanctuary as this will give you more damage to bosses and rare enemies, another great choice that you can swap in even better if it has legendary potential. Core of the Mountain grants damage immunity after you've been hit, and this has a 15 second internal cooldown, but the 3 seconds is plenty of time in order for your character to get topped off, especially if you have something like health on melee hit on one of your weapons. Foot of the Mountain will grant you a stack of Mountain's Endurance whenever you aren't moving. This allows 100% of dodge rating to convert to Endurance Threshold, and overall you can get an enormous amount of Endurance Threshold, and you can easily hit this 60% Endurance cap. Even when you are moving, the Endurance percentage will remain the same, and you'll still have a relatively high Endurance Threshold. Pair that with some solid armor and high chance to dodge, and overall the character is actually plenty tanky. Keep in mind that detonating arrow is being converted to a melee attack, meaning that the top line in the apex of the plus throwing damage doesn't actually benefit the build. We're really just going after the minus to throwing mana cost. Increased throwing attack speed does however benefit the build tremendously. The faster we can throw these traps out, the more of that melee damage that we can deal. The final mountain item that we use in this setup is Peak of the Mountain, and this just supplies an enormous amount of critical strike chance to the build, and allows you to proc the Eye of Rune stacks even faster. I'll leave screenshots for all the passives and and specialization trees for your reference. Enjoy the build, and best of luck getting some legendary potential on the best pieces to swap for bosses. It'll help take the build to another level. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.